Like, we're done? What do you mean? And like, my question is, are you going to shift? Or are you like done, done? Because there's a difference between having a self-awareness to shift, you know, do something different. I'm Zach Hall, and this is The Mindset Movement. All right, guys, you're in episode four here of The Mindset Movement. And today, we got a big guy in the motivational speaker, influencer marketing, and digital marketing space um, on the line with us here today. We got Dominique Bradley. Um, guy's really just an overall badass. Got some awesome content he puts out there. Um, probably going to be the next Eric Thomas. We'll just put it like that. Let's so, uh, do it. Let's go. <laughs> Dom, introduce yourself, man. Tell everybody why you're everything. Oh, man. Listen, so I would say my name is Dominic. Nice to meet you guys. Everything has to come down to who you are and I guess the values which you portray. And my, my biggest thing is try to help as many people as you possibly can. Definitely pull that from the Zig Ziglar. Um, been watching him for a very long time is, you know, how many people can you help to get to where you want to go? And that's to me the biggest thing in the world. Um, I, I had multiple times to kind of scale up bigger than I am now, but I like working with small businesses. I work in behind multiple agency companies and I realized there's this position of small businesses that I love. Um, there's a threat. It's, it's kind of like being in a startup. They're always trying to grow and always trying to figure it out. So I decided to work in that influencer space because mostly no matter what, there's a shift happening in that hot word called influencers. Um, because usually the influencers are just your top customers in a business that used to just be willing to parade around and talk about your product. And then the word influencer came out and changed the whole dynamic of how a single person looks at themselves as a commodity when it comes down to working with products and services. So now, since that dynamic is shifting, I'm trying to bring as much as I can clarity wise to what it is to be an influencer, what it is to build a brand in, you know, 2019, 2020. So everything's going to be crazy different. Dude, I know I've been watching you. Like you've probably doubled your following just within the past couple months. Like it's, it's, it's nuts. The stuff you're putting out there is good. And, but everybody wants to be a motivational speaker. Everybody wants to shake the world and market. Right. But what everybody lacks is that energy. And that's why I had to get you on here today because you just got that insane, like really, really attractive energy that when, when you say something, people listen, like it's, it's just overall, it's a good, good, good quality stuff. Um, sorry, we're dropping stuff all over the place here. (laughs) No man, but, uh, but, uh, like, you're over there, your website where people can find you, uh, the gentle gorilla.com, right? Uh, that's like your media agency website, right? Where you guys can, yeah, yeah people can go in, they can apply, they can uh, see about working possibly with you, possibly to build their brands um, through like yeah. digital influencer marketing, right? Um, and I see, yeah, let me throw, I'm going to throw a little history back on that real quick. Um, so if you guys know, if you guys have watched me for a while, or you're just not getting to meet me, the gentleman gorilla is a collab that's happening with another gentleman that I'm working with right now. Okay. Um, his name is Greg, an amazing content creator. He brought um, a whole nother look and vision when it came down to how much content needed to be created and what price Now we understand the marketplace really depends on how much you're worth. And that's what people have to understand. You can say you're worth 10 grand, but if the market's only going to pay you five, you better figure out how to pay your bills. So the gentleman gorilla, um, came from him. It's his brand. Um, as in he's the gentleman gorilla. Um, I came in, known him for a couple of years and I love him as a person. I like his, 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 his like his desire to help people. And, yeah. uh, maybe only four weeks ago, we decided to collab completely together. Um, I launched the IG turnip team, uh, which is part of the, the gentleman gorilla and the IG turnip team is just about people who are trying to make it just on the Instagram platform, giving them an understanding of what's happening and then being powered by the gentleman gorilla. So if you find us on the gentleman gorilla, um, you know, reach out to us. We don't really put it. We don't put any prices or stuff on the platform at all because we're not the kind of marketing company that has, you know, one or two funnels in the system. We want to give you exactly what you need. So when you need something, I don't want to just give you what we have to offer and be very careful with agencies selling you things that they have to offer and not what you need. And that's a huge difference. No, I know. It comes down to it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people, yeah, that's it. That's the story of that. And taking as much as they can out of it. Right. Like there, of course you got to have a value ladder, but um, like if, if you're just shooting for money and anything in life, it's just a recipe for disaster. It's not going to work. Um, yeah, obviously definitely. from what you're saying definitely. there, I mean, it's, it's very, very apparent and, and very clear that you're not doing what you're doing for money. And that's a big thing that I like to say on this show, like the, 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 the consistent, the most static thing across every episode we're doing here is everybody's saying the same thing, or at least I'm exposing that fact that you're not doing it for money. Yeah. 
Like most people do it genuinely yeah. because they, they just like and they love what they're doing. A few episodes ago yeah. there, um, I had a guy on Mike and we were talking. It's it's not even necessarily passion driven. It's like obsession driven. Like you just got to be obsessed yeah. and love what you do if you want to succeed with that. Exactly. And uh, kind of going back to uh, like what you're saying with the free, free, free. That's the approach I'm taking. Like I put a hundred thousand, yeah. multiple hundred thousand dollars a month businesses that I was running online e-commerce stores. I put that stuff on hold so I could start doing these videos, start doing these podcasts, start yeah. growing my own personal brand because I believe in the same exact thing. Kind of like Gary Vee says, right? Build your personal yeah. brand because that's something nobody can ever take away from you. Um, like I believe a big government uh, economic recession is coming in the next two years. I think the housing market is going to yeah. crash like it did in 08. Um, it's a big thing. Everybody's talking about it too. Like <laughs> that's in like the entrepreneur space. So uh, I, I believe that's coming. So I want to be prepared, right? Because when that happens, nobody's going to be buying stuff online, but I'll still have my personal brand. I can do influencer marketing like you're doing now. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I might not make what I can, I might not make then what I am now, but it'll still be uh, something, right? It's a guaranteed income stream exactly. when everything uh, hits the fan. But, uh, you know, like I, I'm doing like Shopify videos, uh, free credit training videos, all this stuff over on my YouTube channel. Everything's free. Yep. I don't think a course is necessarily morally wrong to do. I just don't think it's the best way to do it. So if your true message yeah. is to uh, like help and change people's lives, then you shouldn't be trying to profit off that by like selling your course for a thousand or two thousand dollars. Like if your core yeah. message is truly to help and change the world, then give it away for free. And like I've said before, yeah. like you can actually make more money when you give stuff away for free from like ad revenue. Yeah. <laughs> so there's, yeah, there's definitely there's two ways to streak that because I'm always I'm always on the edge, right? I always have like this balance of trying to figure out what is you should give away and what you shouldn't give away. One thing I do know from being in the marketing space for so long as well is people have a hard time valuing things that they don't pay for. In a weird way, it's always like this obsession of two things, like two way streak is like. How much do you give away for free? And does someone take action on free as much as they take action on that $500 course? Right. And there's like, there's that huge gap between, I've worked with a lot of, um, you know, people who sell informational products online. Shout out to uh, Jesse Doback, uh, who killed in the, the Facebook space. I've been working with him for a while now. Me and him have been kicking it for the last couple of weeks, uh, doing shooting videos together. Um, and the one thing that he noticed, he's like, and he's like, the crazy part about it is, he said when he was giving away information for free, people weren't taking action. And therefore, he's giving away this information that truly helps people do what they need to do on Facebook. But what was happening was he, they truly were just digesting it and then not implementing it. So he's like, yes, I was getting a lot of watches. I was getting a lot of respect. But if I truly wanted to help someone, I needed them to take action. He said when I started charging for my courses, people started to take respect for the fact that someone's paying for it. And now they better implement this action or they lost this thing that they seek so value called money. So that's crazy to me at the same time, because I like to give away everything I can, but I also realize it's, that's almost a true statement. People have a balance of what they respect when it's free or when it's not free. And how do you kind of, you know, put yourself in the right position to execute it morally, you know, as a person who wants to give it away for free, but then also as a person who really wants to help someone, if you look at the statistics and, it doesn't help them if it's free, but it helps them if they pay for it. Then what do you do? You know, that's a question I always think about in my head. Then, then what do we do? You know, what are we supposed to do right. now? You know, it's crazy to me. Right. Like I spent $3 on the milk and it's about to expire tomorrow. I better drink it. It's pretty much what it is. Like they spent, exactly. yeah, they spent money on the course. So they're like, well, I, I spent money on it. I got to do, I got to consume it. I got to do something with it. That's, I guess, how they're looking exactly. at it. Um, yeah. But Again, yeah, psychologically, like that's that, that's how it works. Um, yeah, and you, how, how do you do action. it? You know, yeah, how do you do it? Right. Yeah. Um, but a big thing I'm seeing you doing, and, and and this is something that really caught me with you. Again, the motivational stuff, but the fact that I'm seeing you post on your platforms, um, Facebook, Instagram, multiple times per day. And again, I always talk about this principle. Um, it's it's uh, the familiarity principle, or in psychology they call it um, the mere exposure effect. And 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 what yeah. happens is you're posting content multiple times, multiple times, and people keep seeing you and whether they have a positive or a negative experience with you, they're, they're just going to prefer you more. They're going to prefer you more. They're going to be attracted yeah. to what you're saying more and they're going to like you. And they're going to listen more than anybody who's never seen you before. Um, so that's exactly. kind of how I've been growing and following with this. I mean, we're only on, 
we're dropping the other link. We're only on episode number four right now here recording with you. Um, but we've, we've grown very, very fast. Like we have 500 people following already that are consistently listening to the show. And, and that's, yep. and that's because we're constantly posting. So our plan, exactly. our goal is we post on every single platform seven times a day. And, and, and yeah, the, go the, the, 10, 10 X right there. 10 X. Yeah. Grand Cardinal, um, plug them right there. A big reason like why I wanted to do this, and I'll be straight honest with you is I was so uncomfortable with being in front of a camera. I, 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 I never liked being in front of a camera. I like speaking to people, yeah. but I don't like being in front of a camera. I don't like talking like on audio like this. I don't like recording what I'm doing and put it down on the internet. So like I conquered the other half of like the, the making money part of the world. Right. So now I needed to conquer my fears. Like I needed to face the demons and truly like punch them in the face. So that's why I'm real. Yeah. That's really the main reason behind why I'm doing all this stuff is uh, because yeah. I, 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 I'm just uncomfortable doing it, but kind of going back to what you were saying there or what I was saying there with, with you posting, like that's, that's just how you sell people. Like I'm going to save everybody $2,000 in, in, in sales courses, like how to sell stuff. That's how you do it. You just post, yeah. post, post. You, you got to have people like you, resonate you, and trust you. And the best way to do that is with social media, posting stuff. So when people see you multiple times, they actually prefer you. Psychologically, you are selling them on yourself. So if you do want to yeah. sell them a course or you do want to push them towards your free content, they'll do it because they already are sold yeah. on the fact of you in their mind. So um, all good stuff, all good stuff. Um I mean, man, what's what's the game plan here? We're halfway. We just hit the we just hit the halfway point of 2019. Uh, like, what's your game plan here for the other half? Yeah, man. So since I was so big in the the Instagram space right now and trying to grow, I wouldn't say I'm huge. You know, there's other there's other wells out there killing the game. So, mad out respect to them. One thing that I realized that I was making a mistake on doing, oh, my nose is itching like crazy. Um, is um, I met with this guy, Wade, which I was talking to you about earlier. Mm -hmm. he's, a, he's a god in the space of podcasts, been doing it 16 years. And me and my team, for the last you know couple months, we've been like, you know, content's king, content's king, content's king, content's king. And that was like our mindset. And we're literally in a uh, YouTube meetup group in San Diego. And this is the first time I meet this guy, Wade, and we're talking and we're, we're, we're spitting it. And my, my, my partner, Greg, pokes me. He's like, man, I don't know what he just said, but we just have to switch up everything right now. And I was like, why? He goes, he goes, content is not king. He's like, if you keep saying that, you're really putting yourself in a bad position. He goes, content is queen. Context is king. Because no matter what you say, if you, if you put out, if what you say doesn't matter and you produce content, the content's shit. Okay. Excuse yeah. me. We'll start about that. So, um, and that's where it comes down. He goes, you know, the content has to have a meaning and he goes, okay, well, content's queen context is king and community is God. And you have to remember that because what you're talking about and then who you're talking about matters more than the content itself. And I reversed everything in the last, um, about a month and we've been switching up. We literally just launched three different meetup groups in my area just to meet with people. And you, I realized the drastic difference we've been making by touching the community and just allowing people to come out and meet with us and have conversation with us in person and how that pulls back to your actual social media platforms is huge because there's nothing like touching the community, like being in the area. Like there's a lot of people around you that have no idea what you do. Like my neighbors don't know what I do. The person on the street who probably wants to do what I do doesn't know what I do. And that's the only time they can see me in person and talk. And that's a real connection. The internet's a great connection. Don't get it twisted. A lot of people I found on the internet, but I'm building a better tribe in the last you know month than I've had this whole time online. So me and my team for 2019, we're switching up the game and we're trying to get as much in person as we possibly can as well, mm -hmm. because those tribal members are going to be stronger than the people who meet you online because it's the personal wave and energy of connection that they get to have when they see you in person. They get to talk to you. You get to have a true belief in who you are as a person. Right. And that's how you carry on this, this, this ability to grow through people is through the community. So, you know, what I would tell anybody out there is start putting your time in the people who are closest to you um, economically, you know, like not, not economically, uh, geographically, like right, right here around you, yeah. right next to you, get in a meetup group, talk about what you do and meet a couple of friends. So me and my team are going hard in the community so we can understand what they want us to talk about so that we can build content on it. So that's what we're going for the rest of 2019. Right. And that's, uh, 
it's more personable that way too. People are going to obviously like you and, 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 and everything else more because you're actually meeting with them in person. And, uh, like I ran a digital marketing agency, um, probably not to the level you're running it on, but I ran one about a year and a half ago. That's really one of the first businesses I launched. And, uh, the main, the main way I would get people is I would go into their business. I would talk to them and I would sit down and then I would sell them on my services. Right. But the other way that's a little more, uh, streamlining the whole process. Like I would call people on the phone, right? Cold calling them. And obviously your, your closing rate is just significantly less. And this is going to be, uh, again, the analogy here is very similar to what you're saying. Like when you see people in person, like it's, it's better. It's always just better. Like you can talk to them, you can trust yeah. them. People can see you, they can read your body language, everything. But when you're talking yes. to them over the phone or you're, t- you're messaging them on Instagram, it's just not the same. Like I'm sure pretty much Very every true. single person I, I get, I would probably put money on this, that 90% of the people you talk to in your networking groups probably go and follow you on Instagram as soon as you meet them. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Probably Very that, true. Right there, that right there. Um, I mean, but like, sorry about that. When does the grind stop? This is one I want to ask you. Cause I know you go really, really hard. Like, uh, I think when we and you first started messaging on Instagram there, it was like at three in the morning, but like, uh, when does it stop? Yeah. For you? Do you, uh, do you like have a set schedule? Um, or do you just work until the job's done or do you work till you're tired or like, how does it go? Yeah. Man, I don't even, I would say there is no stopping point in my position. There's I'm on, you know, in, in my mind, I, I'm, I'm on all the time. And that's something I try to work on in my own life because I'm a little obsessed with things that I do. So, you know, personally, I would say, you know, when people ask about trying to make money online and they go in and out of this situation, you have to be obsessed with it regardless if you're making money or not. And so I'm always on, you know, and it doesn't matter what the day is, what my bank account looks like, you know, or anything like that to stop me from being on. And a lot of people are very, very, they try to make themselves close to the money. And I always want to tell you that the money in the entrepreneur world, it, it comes as fast as it goes. <laughs> so, yeah. so you're, so being on, it, it's who I am. I did find out something that I love to do. And then after that, I kind of got obsessed with results, you know, and the people who win get results. I'll tell you that for sure is it doesn't matter if you're working forever, forever, but if you're not finishing things, you know, that's what you have to do is be on. You have to be willing to be on. Or, you know, one thing I realized from Gary Vee is be happy with what you're doing. And if being on is what makes me happy, because it is, I'm in, you know, but I also have people who work with me who aren't on like me. You know, I send text messages and stuff to the people I work with at like three in the morning, two in the morning, and I'm, they don't have to respond. That's not my, that's not my position to tell them when they should be up grinding or when they should not be. My job is to make sure that I value what's good for them. And then I'm yep. able to, to work with them with what's best on their desires. Uh, and to me, turning off is, I don't know what that means, you know, but I'll, that also means I had to realize that people do have a turn off switch. Like I have my boy, right. he's like, after six, don't call me. <laughs> he's like, <laughs> he's like okay. that's my time. I'm gone. And he needs that. you right. And I used to be young and stupid and be like, no one needs that. Everybody should work a hundred percent every day. Yeah. Until you die. Until you but die. I had to grow up a little bit and realize we're all different. No, but, like, so. and, and, and yeah, you're absolutely right. Like that's really when everybody starts winning from what I'm seeing. Like I've talked to a ton of people in the entrepreneur space, a lot of the top dogs out there. And, and, and what everybody seems to say is that you don't start winning until you start helping other people. Like if you have, if you go in with selfish desires, like if you're doing it for money, like we said earlier, if you're doing it for money, you're yeah. going to lose. If you're doing it, to actually help other people and you get obsessed with helping other people win more than yourself, that's when you're going to win, right? You got to give, True. give, give and ask for nothing in return. And that's when you're going to get stuff in return. Like that's when things really yeah. blow up for you. And, and for me, where, where my e-commerce space started to blow up and there's a bunch of variables to this, but this was during the yeah. time when it was blowing up was, uh, I was, I was like selfish with the money. So I'm like, Oh my God, I've made like, at the time it was like 50 grand in, in a month. And I'm like, wow, I made all this money. I'm going to be the next kid that buys a Lamborghini on Instagram. <laughs> but uh, what I was uh, kind of realizing there was like, I'm making all this money. Like I have something super valuable. How about I start charging people for it? Like my information's so, so good. I got something so nobody else has. Like I'm going to 
charge a thousand dollars for it. Right. And I'm glad I never went through with that because but when I started to do that, like I had that mindset, like what I have is so good and I'm going to force other people to pay me to get it. Um, yeah. Once that was my mindset and I started recording videos driven towards that goal, um, things yeah. went south, like things started to go south bad. But once I switched yeah. that mindset yeah. to, well, I have something good. How about I share and help as many people as I can with it? That's when things yeah. like they, they blew up like 10 times what I was doing. Like things went exactly. like drastically north. Okay. Instead of drastically yeah. south. But uh, exactly. Uh, let's see here. I want to get you a good question. I want to get you a good question. Why do 99% of the people fail? Yeah, that's a good one. Oh, man. I, I would say they forget it's a marathon. You know? It's, it's a marathon run, you know, and that's, that's where people fail. They come in on a sprint and they come in with the wrong mindset because a lot of things online are sold to make yourself money. So when you're buying these products and stuff like that, people are in the mindset of, I need to be the next person. I need to make this money. I need to make this money. And they fell because that's where their mind is. You know, it's, if there's no one to lift you when you're falling, you will fall a drastic death. But if people are willing to put your hands out when you're falling, you may catch yourself. And people fell consistently because they're by themselves. People lock themselves up in closets and they position themselves as who they think they should be. Uh, self-evaluation and self-awareness is key. People go into space without self-awareness. You know, you're selfish. You have no self-awareness. Who's going to help you? People around you don't think you're the person that you think you are. And then you're only there for yourself. So the chances of someone working with you is very, 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 very slim. People think you're needy. You're because you need people regardless of what business you're in. You need people to buy your products. <laughs> you need people to work with you. You need someone to be there when something's not working and they can tell you, you need to make a shift. You know, self-evaluation is key. But if you're very self-aware, you may be able to make those shifts. But if you're selfish and not self-aware, when something shifts in the game, you're going to go downhill drastically. I think 90% of people fell because they try to get a quick sprint. You know, if I, if I win, if I hit, a, if I hit two, $3 million in four years, people are not going to even remember this video of us. You know, they're going to, yeah. they're going to start listening in four years and be like, Oh God, he's one of the lucky ones. He just came up. And I'm like, man, I've been doing this for 12 years. I've been up and down in the business. I've had very hard times. I've lost a lot. I've gained a lot. Yeah, everybody but sees the 10% when I, of the iceberg above the water. Nobody sees right? the 90%, when you lose that's once, the majority of it, right? It's true, true. true. You, you lose once like, and people are just like, people willing to quit. Like, I've, I've worked with a lot of people and they, we took a loss together and they're like, I'm done. And I'm like, yes, yes. I didn't even know that was a thing. Like, we're done? What do you mean? And like, my question is, are you going to shift? Or are you like done, done? Because there's a difference between having a self-awareness to shift, you know, do something different. Because I know that for a fact is that I realize that most people don't care about you enough where if you switch, they even care. Like just to, just to let you know, growing my following at the beginning, when I first started, I was, I used to skate, I skate the boardwalk all the time. I have this huge tiger mask and I used to skate the boardwalk with this tiger mask on. And that's how I started growing my following before I did anything. And it was like, all right, well, cool. I was already in marketing but I like to do this tiger thing. I love it. I think it's really fun. I always psychologically like to see how people react to me in a mask. You know, you're so much more approachable, weirdly enough, when people can't see your face, you know, <laughs> uh, because they, they take you in this character. So when people fail, the one thing I want to say about it is you first have to know that you have to be self-aware. Second, you also have to be for the people. And third, you do have to be willing to shift because no one cares enough <laughs> to be upset if you do shift, you know, and that's the thing you have to realize is that, you know, there's people who are like Michael Jackson or, you know, Nipsey Hussle just passed away. Shots out to saying the marathon to my guy, Nipsey Hussle. Um, but that is true is, you know, everyone was posting this stuff. It was a huge thing. And then it's dying down slowly, but he was a God in his space. Imagine how much work he put in, in his space. And when he's gone, people start to dwindle away. So the same thing with your business. If you're out there right now and you are scared to fail and you're not in the right space, don't be afraid to shift hard, but keep going. Because no one who's following you 
cares enough, not, not to say people don't care, but they don't care enough. If you turn from the e-commerce guy to the mother number one podcast in the nation, people are going to come at you next year. Like, Oh my God, he's the best podcast guy ever, man. They're like, what does he do? He does podcasts. He's like, nah, bro. I do e-commerce. Like, what are you talking about? That's how I built this position. But people will totally not care enough. So I, I would tell you, be okay with shifting because that's a really key thing <laughs> when it comes down to finding what yeah. makes you happy and how you can help people. Yeah. And, and, and I'm not even like failing in the e-commerce space. I just took a step back and put it on hold for a second because I want to build this personal brand up, right? That's why yeah. I'm doing the podcast here. So I can record the podcast, yeah. right? I can take yeah. the videos here that we're recording with. I can post them on YouTube. Okay. I can put it on Instagram TV, put it on my Facebook page, and I can take the video. I can chop it up into about 20 different segments and send them to you can keep them for myself. We can both post them like crazy on every single platform. You should be posting multiple yep. times a day. Um, like I'm doing this for a brand. Like I don't have the shiny yeah. object syndrome. Like I get a lot of people messaging me now, like even old mentors that are, that are just laughing at what I'm doing right now. Like, dude, you claim to be somebody that understands entrepreneurship and the mindset required to like win. And it's so ironic that you're launching a show called the mindset movement. When you're, you have shiny object syndrome, dude, you're just out there, chasing something else, something else that's shiny. It's going to make you a million dollars. I'm like, no dog, you got it all wrong. Like I'm doing this to yeah. blow up a personal brand. I'm still a winner with e-commerce. Okay. Still yeah. will always be one. I'm going to not leave in that space at all. I'm doing yeah. this so I can get my message out there to help change more people's lives because I'm not yeah. selfish. I care about helping as many people as I can. I don't want to say. Yeah. Like, here's everyone. the thing that's really cool about that is as a Shopify guy, you're in the back end and and you're selling products and it's working, but what happens if it all starts, stops working? You may not have as many connections as you would have for someone to reach yeah. out and help you and know who you are, know you're talented and be like, hey, you know, I know you're hitting a hard time. I got a job for you here if you need to get your money back up. Because people forget what it is to spread your knowledge and get to know people with a personal brand because there's a point in time where everything can go downhill and those relationships who know you and know how smart you are that you're going to build with your personal brand are going to give you a lot of legs up when you don't win, you know, because there's a lot of people who have been in this space and they start losing, but they didn't spend enough time helping people and they didn't spend enough time giving people the opportunity to get to know them because they're so wrapped up in making their money. They're so wrapped up in, you know, trying to be the next guy to show off, but you know, I've just like, I've seen people, I've seen people make millions of dollars in the online space. And then the next year they're broke. People are like, how? I'm like, cause no one liked them that much. <laughs> you know, <laughs> No one reached out and was like, Oh, you need help. Like, here's your job. Like if you're in the internet business and you make a lot of money, then you're not making money anymore. And no one reaches out for you to be on their team to help you get back. You should be very, very confused on what kind of brand you built for yourself. If no one's willing to reach out and ask for your help, you know, or not even ask for your help to even get you to work for them. Because simply you could just be out of money and need to get a job and that, that could just happen. It's entrepreneurial world. I always say when you get a job, treat it like it's your baby because it's going to build your business. You know, don't go into a job and be mad that you're at a nine to five. Like it blows my mind when people are like, I hate my nine to five. I'm like, you better love that shit. You better love it and then build a business off of it yeah, and then bro, like, love them because they're allowing you to build this business. So yeah, your personal brand fun. means that much. That's you know, your personal brand too. means that much. Yeah. Right. Right. That's something that can never be taken away from you too. Like that's, what's funny to me. Like I see people all the time complaining about their job. Like I hate Monday. Like, Oh my God, I can't believe the weekend's over. Right. I live for Friday nights. Like you put yourself in that situation. Like we didn't do it. Uh, the top 1% yeah. in the world, Bill Gates didn't do it. He's not responsible for no. why your life sucks. Like you're no working that, you're working that nine to five job because of your own doing like nobody else's fault yeah. but yourself. Oh, but I need money. Yeah, sure. You need some money, right? And, and yeah. a job is the worst way to get money, in my opinion. Um, maybe after like prosecution or something like that. But uh, you 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 don't have to have a job to make money. Look at me. I started with e-commerce with zero real dollars to my name, right? I figured out how to utilize credit and trade lines, and I took that money to start growing my e-com empire. And then I, I took the profits off that. Just re kept reinvesting, reinvesting, reinvesting. Like, like people's exactly. excuses. You know, I'm saying that because most people's excuse is, well, sure, you can make money in e-commerce or or in, in, in marketing businesses, all these different places, right? But you got to have money to make money. That's that's the, the universal law, right? Everybody teaches that. You got to have money to make yeah. money. When, um, 
like you don't have to have it. You just have to have access to it. You just got to know how to get the money, right? So well, I'm speaking fast here, but where I'm trying to get to this is like you're responsible for yourself being in that nine to five. You know, if if you understand that, okay, maybe I can make more money like doing something that I actually want to do, like my own business. Um, like you should do that. You know, go yeah. figure out how to do that. You shouldn't be you shouldn't be six p.m. at night and you're watching TV for the next four hours, yeah. right? Go home and exactly. chase your dreams, chase your fucking potential. Go out and get what you actually want instead of sitting there watching yeah. TV and doing nothing. Like that's what exactly. that's what you should be doing. Like you're responsible for your own situation. You're a victim of your surroundings, right, and everything that you're in. But you're the reason you're in that. Like I'm, yeah, I'm true. absolutely, I'm responsible for my own fate on what I've been able to do, what I what I've been doing, what's going to happen. I'm responsible for that. Nobody else is the reason why that mm-hmm. happened. Like I, it's, it's my fault. I'm in the position I'm in. Fault doesn't always mean a bad thing. Okay. So. (laughs) Yeah. There's always two ways. Remember that also people out there who are watching this, be okay with making less money too. Yeah. You know, if you're not happy, (laughs) there's a shift that you can make. If you want to make more money, you know, find that way, but to be happy, maybe you have to take less money. Maybe you got to go to a different place, make less money. You got to fail. Downgrade to a one bedroom apartment. And just love your life. Because I have a few friends now that I realize that are just fucking yeah. happy. You know, you and they don't money. make millions of dollars. But I've had friends who are making stupid amount of money and they're just so unhappy. And you're just like, it's crazy to think that, you know, money doesn't make you happy, but it definitely gives you freedom to explore what makes you happy. So for, don't remember, don't forget that. Yeah. You know, you, you need some options. You need to be able to figure some things out. A little bit of extra money and a little bit of extra scratch gives you a chance to test things at may possibly yeah. make you happy so right the way i always explain it because everybody again another cliche thing everybody says is money doesn't buy you happiness money will always buy you temporary happiness right like you can't find out and do what you actually want to do unless you have money because you gotta most people get themselves drowned in student loan debt, and then they buy a house because they're told to then they buy a car whatever so they got bills to pay right so when you make money it's going to buy you temporary happiness because you're going to be able to pay for the stuff that's going to push off stress in your life. And after that, yes. if, if you're only Very chasing true. money, right, if you're only chasing money, like you want to be a millionaire or a billionaire, even like you're not going to be happy because the journey to the top, that's the fun part, right? The getting punched in the face, the failing. If, if you're only chasing money, like you're never going to have enough, right? The richest man in history, J.D. Rockefeller, was asked in an interview back in the 1940s or 50s. J.D. Rockefeller, richest man in history, he was asked, how much money is enough money? And, and, and his, his answer was awesome. He said, a little bit more. So the, if the richest man in history, dollar on dollar, if you adjust for inflation, the richest man in history is saying that there's no such thing as enough money, just a little bit more than everybody else in the world, like, <laughs> that's that, that that should say something to everybody else like you shouldn't chase the money get enough money to the point to where you have what you what you need like so you can pay for your stuff like and have build your you know, get enough money to build yourself a life that you want right you don't need a lamborghini first off <laughs> you don't you don't need the yacht you don't need the 14 bedroom mansion like sure that stuff will be cool but if you want to get to that level prepare to sacrifice just a stupid amount of years of your life right? Time's more valuable than money. So you're always going to have to trade. You got, you got three currencies in the world, right? Time, money, knowledge, right? If you want to get any of the three, you're going to have to exchange one for the other. So if you want to chase a bunch of money and, and money's man-made, time's not, yeah. knowledge isn't, right? So if you want to make a bunch of money, you're going to have to trade a ton of your time to get it. If you want to make a bunch of, um, if you want to make a bunch of knowledge, right? You want to learn, you want to be smart, you got to trade your money. You got to trade your time for it. And, and and the smart way to do it, that the smart people of the world, what they do is they trade their money for time, right? They pay people to come and work for them to monetize and, and optimize and make everything faster for their business so they can create time for themselves, right? Um, working working on your business rather than in your business, right? So if you want to whatever you want to do in life, you're always going to have to trade one of the three currencies for something else. So don't get focused on chasing the money because the money doesn't matter. Honestly, money is the most worthless of the three. Um, It's cool. Right. That is true. What is money? It's crazy. It's like told that there has power with money and then therefore now 
it is now powerful and it's not backed up by any resources in the world anymore. So the reason why the dollar was built is not the same as this. It used to be. It's crazy. Right. Right. Um, I've been asking everybody this every single show. We usually plug one book. Everybody's got every entrepreneur, every business owner, self-employed guy. Like everybody's got one book that they attribute their success to. Like one that's kickstarted it for you. What's yours? Like what was the one um, book? Oh, I can't remember who it's by. The book's called Social. It's, a, it's why we're addicted to be connected. Um, okay. It's one of my favorite books of all time to read. And the reason why is because a lot of us forget how connected we were built to be and what is connection to others. And the book is, the book is called Social. And it really just expressed a lot of different situations that we go through as humans in the brain when it comes down to pain situations, social gatherings. And it, it, it was to me, to me, it was one of the most eye opening things in the world. I realized that my social skills was its own currency. Um, so that was huge for me to know that um, basically enjoying people's time, being around, being friendly, being willing to listen and open people's social perspectives up had its own value that's been around since the beginning of time. It is social currency, you know, and to me, that was really, really key because I was chasing money, but I wasn't chasing the currency that I already had, you know, it's like, I already had the money I was looking for. Yeah. It wasn't, I wasn't chasing it. I just had to grow it. Right. I had to get more. Um, I had to do more of what I'm good at to create the ability for people to one, want me around, and then one, want me to work on their business. And I went from being the person who was trying to scrape everything away from like trying to get a hold of business owners, trying to, trying to do this, even though I was trying to help, right? Like, but I was in this needy position, still trying to help. And then I realized like, wait, I am the currency. Maybe I should just talk to these businesses, be really friendly, give them my information for free and expect nothing in return because I can communicate very well and pump people up at the same time. And there's nothing like a great pump up, you know, for a personal person to get a better enlightenment of themselves. And then second, actual good, tangible information. I was giving out good, tangible information, but I wasn't motivating people, which is part of sales is an emotional twist. When I realized that social and being social and talking to people is a currency, I was like, well, knowing what I'm talking about is one currency. Now giving people the, the information they need um, about who I am, why I'm here, and then who they are and how I see them in the most positive light, then it struck gold for me. It's like, man, now people are like, I want to work with this guy. Like, okay, who is this guy? And I started to get more and more. And now I'm just like, I'm barely on the cuff of coming out of that, right? Like, I'm like just now realizing how powerful it's going to be. And I'm really excited. So that book, you should definitely check out. If you're a little bit of a social bug or you're not a social bug, right? That book will give you the information on logically why you should make power moves in the public and with people. Yep. Matthew Lieberman, social. Yep. Matthew, I haven't read yes. it. I just, I was just looking it up when you're talking there. Um, good stuff. Yeah. I, I just got a message this morning from, from audible telling me that one of my credits are about to expire. So, uh, right after we're done here, I'm going to go and get that. And that's probably going to be the next one yeah. because everything that you're saying, everything that I'm saying, like, bro, we're on the same page, like give the free yeah. stuff away. Like, Get that out of your mind. Like, I'm, I want to be a millionaire, so I'm going to go out there chasing a dollar. Go out there and chase helping people. Go out there to chase changing the world and getting your message, getting your skill out there for free, right? So if you're saying, like, that's what the book's talking about, like, that's what, yeah. I, that's going to be a perfect book for me. So I got to go check it out. Everybody listening, too, it's, it's right down there in the description. doesn't matter what platform you're listening on. Um, we got the link down there. Go check the book out. Um I, I, honestly, if the book's not good, I'll tell you this right now, um, if I post these a little bit in advance, so I'll have the book done in the next day or two if I want to start it. But if the book's not good, it's not going to be in the description. So if it's down there in the description, definitely check it out because it's going. that means it's a really good book. Like I'm not going to plug something that's not good at all. <laughs> but uh, yeah. like, no, dude, that's, that's, that's good. Like you're, you're big on the law of attraction. I, I can see that. Like you attract a hundred percent, like you, you emit positivity and then you get positivity in return. Like that, that was, Correct. again, maybe that's what I was trying to say earlier in the beginning of the show, but like, that's why 
I was drawn to you right away because I'm big on that same principle. I'm like, dude, this is somebody who gets it, man. It's somebody who gets yeah. it. Like, give, see, if you can do this, like, let me ask you, like, what's one thing, and we've probably, again, probably hit on this a little bit already, but what's the one thing that the starting out entrepreneur should do? Oh, shit. Believe with no vision. <laughs> believe with with no um no guaranteed end goal in sight but be willing to have faith and um to me that's super important and i'll express it in the law of attraction phase that people can understand um people love the book law of attraction it was um it was, it was it's a it's a one part series of an older book I, I can't remember what the name of the book is but you guys have to understand the law of attraction is not an original book. It's a rewrite of an old traditional book that had four layers, which talked about, you know, the vision, which is the first one, the attempt to attack, which is the action you put in. And then the revise, which means once you have now believed and you've now taken action, then revise it. Like, wait, did that work or did it not work? And then the second attempt, people have to know with the vision, of going to whatever you want. The reason why the law of attraction works is because every single day your brain is accepting thousands of messages around, right? And if your brain isn't pointed at a certain message, other people are going to put in your head, whatever they're looking to give you. But when you have a vision and you're trying to focus on something, your brain will start pushing things out that it doesn't want to see. That's not towards your goal. And it will only accept things that you're looking to do. And that's why they, the people saw a law of attraction. It's not that things weren't there before. It's that you weren't focused on them. So your brain wasn't going to pick them up. You're getting messages. You're getting text messages. You're seeing people. But when your brain is focused on a goal, it's going to release these visions that could have been already there. It's like when people finally hit success, it wasn't that success wasn't there. It's that their vision wasn't clear. When your vision isn't clear, it's cloudy. You know, and how much sun can you see in a cloudy day? So my biggest thing is to make sure you focus on being able to go get it and not actually always seeing the end vision. Like be okay with not knowing what the end looks like, but be okay with chasing it because your brain is going to start opening up these keys and you got to start taking these keys and using them. And it's going to develop the real vision you're looking for at the end. Okay, good. Well, guys, statistics do show that the average attention span on a podcast or a video along these lines here, talk show, is 45 minutes, okay? 45 minutes long, we've hit the mark here. So yeah. we're talking statistics-wise, realistically, most people are going to start falling off here. Um, so we've already went over some really, really good, valuable stuff. Um, you definitely plugged some awesome things right there. I really, really appreciate you coming on, Dom. Um, guys, connect with this guy right here. All of his stuff is down there in the description. Um, all the social links, you want to follow him over there on Facebook. You want to follow him on Instagram. Um, check out his website over there. Uh, what was that website there? The, the gentlemangorilla.com, right? Check him out, dude. Like his stuff is good. It's not like he's the guy on Instagram that's posting just every single day. He's only posting pictures of motivational quotes and, and acting like he, like he is an influence, like he knows what he's doing, right? Like he's not acting like that. He actually is that. Like he's a guy that knows what he's doing in his space and he's putting up good quality content stuff that's actually him, okay? So yeah. if you want to get motivated, okay, if you want to wake up and actually start chasing your potential instead of like chasing a dollar, go and follow Dom. Like he's got some good stuff, guys. But Dom, thanks for being on the show, appreciate man. I it. really, really appreciate, appreciate it. it. Me and you, we got to connect because I know you're good at like oh, definitely. Up, um, stuff. So uh, I got some projects here I want to talk with you on. But uh, dude, yeah, thanks for coming on the it, show, man. man. That's, uh, that's all we got. It. Thanks everyone for listening. I hope you guys have a blessed day. All right, see you later. All right, my man. See ya. Thanks for watching the show, guys. Honestly, I really appreciate all the feedback I've been getting. If you haven't been giving me any feedback, it really, really helps me. It shows the search engines that people are actually engaging with my content. So if you did like what I had to say today, um, go ahead and give me a big thumbs up and a like. If you didn't like what I had to say today, give me a big thumbs down or a dislike because either way, honestly, it helps the show out. It shows the search engines, like I said, that people are engaging with our content. And furthermore, if you really like what we have to say, 
uh, just make sure to subscribe here to the show. Subscribe to it, engage with the content, leave a, leave a comment, leave a like, share it with somebody else. Help us get the message out there, guys. This is a completely free show. I don't charge for any of my content, so all the help I can get, I really, really appreciate it. But make sure you stay tuned, guys, because next week's episode may be even better than this week's episode, so make sure you check it out. I record these in advance, so I definitely know that uh, every single week, uh, what's what's going to be coming, what's not going to be coming, but make sure you check this one out because next week's episode is really, really good, guys. I have some really good points to get in, in there, and I got a really special guest on there that you're probably not expecting, so make sure to go over and check that show out because I promise you, you're going to pull some insane keys out of that one, guys, but until then, we'll see you next time.